Honestly, it's the nicest feeling when you see that notification that says, in two days, you're gonna get $100 in your account. You're just like, ooh, money, ching, 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 ching. <laughs> the quaint pursuit. I'm Gabby, also known as the quaint boss, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to set up payment options for your Shopify store. This video is specifically for Caribbean entrepreneurs and business owners because we face a lot of restrictions where Shopify is concerned and things like PayPal, for example, and we simply just don't have access to the same things that people in other countries have. Since I've had my Shopify store, which is over two years now, I have actually found some ways to make it work in my favor. I found some ways to work around the restrictions so that I still have access to a lot of the things that on an unusual basis would be unavailable to persons in our region. I just want to say thank you for joining me for this video and I'm so grateful to have passed the 1000 subscriber mark. If you contributed to that, big up yourself. Welcome back if you're a usual subscriber and if you're not, then you should consider subscribing for business tips, life tips, and tutorials. And just a heads up, I think you should get a paper and a pen so you can start taking notes. These videos are like classes, guys. I am giving you classes on how you can master your Shopify store, how you can master your business. I'm sharing the wealth of knowledge that I've gotten in my experience five years of being an entrepreneur and owner of the brand claims by GSC. <laughs> if you don't already have a Shopify store, then go ahead and create one. And I would recommend using Shopify because, you know, it's an amazing platform and it's the platform that I've been using for quite some time now. If you want to know about other platforms that you can use to create an e-commerce store, then check out this video right here, either in the cards up top or in the description box down below. When you're opening your Shopify store, you actually get a 14-day free trial. So that's two weeks of free Shopify, and I would suggest using this time to actually get your store up and running to work on the design, iron out all the kinks, set up shipping, set up payments, add all your products, product descriptions, and all of that stuff. So once you have a 14-day free trial, you can actually get started working on your website. You can either do this from your web browser, whether that's Safari or Google Chrome, or you can download the Shopify app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. I honestly love using the app because I feel like it's just so much easier to use. However, if you prefer a bigger screen, then I would suggest going on your web browser, on your computer. It's a lot more... It's easier to flow that way, as opposed to doing it on a phone that has a very small screen. On Shopify, there are a number of payment providers. There is Shopify Payments, alternative payment methods, third-party payment providers, there's PayPal Express Checkout, and manual payments. So the ones I focus on mainly are Shopify Payments, PayPal Express Checkout, and manual payments. For Shopify payments, they process payments from cards such as Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and so much more. You will go into Settings, then Payments, then you will see the option come up for Shopify payments. You won't see this option if your store is listed in a country outside of the following list. So us Caribbean entrepreneurs, we wouldn't see the Shopify payments option in our store. So it's important that when you're setting up your account, you actually use an address that's in one of these countries or change your address if you already have a Shopify store created. In order to change your store address, you go into settings, then general, and you'll see all the information there that you're supposed to add and click save. Once this is done, you will actually see the Shopify payments option come up. Select complete account setup. Then you'll fill in all the information that they ask for. They're gonna ask for the type of company and you will state whether it's a sole trader, a partnership, a non-profit, an LLC, or whatever. Then you insert your employer identification number. But 
us as Caribbean entrepreneurs, we don't have one of those. So we're just gonna leave that part blank. And it says optional, so it's okay for you to leave that part blank. Then you're going to add the address for your store. Make sure that the address is the same as the one that you stated in general. And then you're going to insert your personal information. Along with that, they're going to ask you to insert your four last digits of your social security number. But I'm assuming you don't have a social security number. So what you could do is to actually use the information of a family member or friend here. So if you have a family member or friend or partner that's cool enough with allowing you to use their information, then you can go ahead, put their name, put all the other personal information that they want and the last four digits of their social security number. Then you're going to insert the product details. They're going to ask for a description of the products. So for example, I sell bags and what I would do is to type in leatherette bags, vegan leather bags with African print, with colors. I'd basically put that in and just describe the nature of your product. They'll also ask for the customer billing statement and the customer billing statement is basically how your company or business will show up on the bank statement of your customer. So if you've ever looked at your bank statement at all, you will see that there's usually a name that goes with the company. So let's say for example you went to the supermarket and the name of the supermarket is Banks Supermarket. You would see Banks Supermarket on your bank statement. So whatever information it is that you want to show on the person's bank statement, that's what you'd enter here into customer billing statement. Then, this is the fun part, the part where you add your banking information. And this is where you're going to need a bank account from one of these same countries that we listed, whether it's in America, in the UK, in Spain, and somewhere in Europe, any bank account that's compatible with Shopify payments, you'll enter the information here, you'll enter the routing number, and you'll enter the account number. Once that's done, you can click save and you're on your way to accepting credit card payments. When you're paid with a credit card, Shopify will actually send that to your bank account. You can set it up based on how you want to receive your payments. So if you want to receive your payments daily, you can select every work day or every business day. You can also select every week on a specific day, whether it's every Friday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday. You can set up for every month on whichever day. So it could be the 28th day, the 31st day, the second day, the fifth day, whatever it is, just adding that information for yourself. And you will actually find that in Shopify payments as well. So you'll just click manage and that will take you to where you can set up your payout schedule. If you choose to get notified on when a payout is on the way, you'll get an email that says X amount of money will be deposited into your account in one to two business days. And honestly, it's the nicest feeling when you see that notification that says, in two days, you're gonna get $100 in your account. You're just like, ooh, Monday, ching, 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 ching. <laughs> the second option that we're looking at is PayPal. And PayPal is pretty straightforward. So you'll see a button that says, activate PayPal Express Checkout. Once you select that, it will take you to PayPal where you can actually sign into your PayPal account and set it up to be connected to your Shopify. However, if it's a personal account that you have, then you have to either convert it to business or just create a whole new business PayPal account overall. To get your money from PayPal, you will also need a bank account from one of the countries that I listed over here. This thing just seems to be popping up every single minute, but yes, it's very important to have one of those bank accounts. Otherwise, the only way that you'll be able to get your money is if that's actually sent to you in the form of a check, and PayPal takes up to three months to process it. And let's face it, Nobody wants to wait three months to get their money, please. And the last way that we're gonna be talking about is manual payments. And in manual payments, you can allow people to pay using a money order, cash on delivery, or a bank deposit. And for me specifically, I use a bank deposit because money order, I don't really know if Jamaica really does money orders like that. Um, cash on delivery, I don't recommend that because somebody could 
order something on your website, you go to meet them with it and the person doesn't show up or they change their mind or something. If it's something that you have to make to order, then I would recommend using a bank deposit. And the way how bank deposits work is that they allow you to insert all your banking details as well as instructions to the customer. Let's say you have Scotia, NCB, JN. You will add your bank information for all of those in this slot right here and in the instruction section you could tell that person that once they make their payment they should either take a picture or a screenshot and send that to you as confirmation and once they've actually paid that's where you will select capture payment on shopify because the way how it works is that when somebody uses a cash deposit when somebody uses a bank deposit to pay for something shopify states it as you needing to capture that payment meaning you need to state that it was actually paid for if you actually live in a country where money orders are a thing then a money order is basically a slip that's created by the post office or bank that basically states that x person should get x amount of money honestly i love using the bank deposit option and i would definitely recommend using that it works very seamlessly and if you don't have a family member or a friend or anyone in the US that can set up Shopify payments for you, then honestly, the bank deposit is your best bet. And if, if you can't access the credit card payment option, then honestly, just don't sweat it because for a while, I wasn't able to use it. I wasn't able to use it. So I had to just be using Shopify. I mean, I had to just be using PayPal and bank deposits. And I felt like, oh my gosh, I wish I could receive credit card payments. But then I just be, I just got patient with myself and just say, you know what? As soon as I got the chance, I'm going to open a US bank account. And that's exactly what I did. So now I don't have to ask a family member or a friend to set it up for me because I have my own credentials. If I could give Caribbean entrepreneurs one piece of advice that would really move their business forward, it's to get a US bank account. And it doesn't have to be US, you know, it could be in the UK, it could be in Europe. Once it's a bank account that's compatible with Shopify and PayPal, it will make your life a thousand times easier because that means you'll be able to receive your payments from PayPal, your payments from Shopify payments, and you'll be able to actually receive credit card payments. You don't want to have to always be relying on a family member or a friend because this is your business here. You don't want to have your stuff mixed up with their personal stuff. So it's best to get your own. So that's one piece of advice. If you don't take anything else away from this video, I hope that you will take that one thing. Open a bank account in a first world country as soon as you're able to. If you watched this video to the end and you found it useful, then give it a thumbs up and comment a money emoji down below. If you have any questions and there's anything you're not clear on, then comment that down below as well. Or you can send me a DM on Instagram at Boss, and I will respond as soon as I possibly can. Share this video with a family member or friend that could use it. And don't forget to subscribe for more business tips, life tips, and tutorials. Next week, I'm going to be posting a video on how to set up shipping options on your Shopify store, specifically again for Caribbean entrepreneurs. I'm also going to be posting a video real soon on how to make a maxi skirt. So if you're into sewing, then that's another reason to subscribe and to also turn on your notification bell so that when I post the video, you won't miss it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.